to the spirit of the living God. Jesus Christ, the word manifested into flesh. The Holy Spirit, a reminder of all things. Our guide and our protector. To the presiding prelate of the 11th Episcopal District, Bishop Adam Jefferson Richardson, Elder Denmark in his absence, and the servant leader of this house. I bring you greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the only true Son of the living God. Go with me, if you will, to the scripture that was read in your hearing. 1 John, the third chapter, 11 through 24. But there was one, uh, one particular verse in this passage of scripture that stood out to me. Let us look at verse 16. And I'll be reading from the King James Version of the Bible. Verse 16 says, Hereby we perceive that we love, we know the love of God. Because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for others. Oh God, Lord God, we come. Father, it is your preaching time. God, speak to your people today. Move Smith out of the way, oh God. Use me as you will in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray. Amen. Amen. I want to talk for a short moment from the subject, if you love me, show me. If you love me, show me. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, if you love me, show me. The definition of love 
is an abstract quality and is therefore indefinable in precise terminology. It finds expression in both nouns and verbs and occurs throughout the Bible in this manner. Love is defined in the dictionary as an emotion, sentiment, or feeling of pleasurable act, attraction or action towards another. In its noun form, a haba, which is the, the, the Hebrew, the ancient Hebrew word for love when it was used in the Old Testament. All right. Now, the Greek language employs the word agape. Now, if one looks at the Greek version of it, it inhabits the true and, and, and the true meaning and properly denotes a love founded on admiration, veneration, and esteem. I have three points, and I'm going to move out your way. The first point is the mark of love. We know, we know that we are justified in the transition from life, from death unto life. Mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you know when there's a change that has been made? Mm -hmm. When you stood here before this altar, wherever it may have been, and gave the preacher your hand and gave God your heart, Something happened at that very moment. That moment when you decided to turn your life over to the master, the, the, the very moment that you decided that you would give up your own will for his, the question becomes, did you bear fruit of that confession? Now, I, as my, my Bible tell, tells me that when that a, good, a tree that bears good fruit will produce something, there should be some evidence of that change. Well, what, what, are you, what are you saying, preacher? What I'm saying is, if you can sit here in this church and look at the person next to you and say that you can't stand them, but yet you praise God all day long and you sit in the church and act like you're so holy, something is wrong. I'm sorry, church, but I have a problem yeah. with that. Right. We come here in oh, God's house, yeah. and, and, and we, we act, well, child, I, you know, I love you. And as soon as you, that person, turn their back. Lord, have mercy. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we represent the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Hmm. They said we keep on moving. Hmm. Hmm. Love towards others. Love makes us have a concern, true love. Mm -hmm. Makes us have a concern for the welfare of others. Yeah, yeah. God speaks of love to others in personal attitudes. There are three chief attitudes towards others. One is hatred. <coughs> what does hate do? Destroy. <laughs> what 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 does what what is the fruit of hatred? <laughs> hatred is ultimate murder. Did you know that you can murder somebody with your mouth? Yes. All right. Born of no 
concern for anyone. And then uh, there is uh, love. What, what, what is love? Have we ever truly experienced it? Have you ever genuinely given the best of yourself to another individual without strings attached? Mm. That's the epitome of what true love is. Would you give the very best you got to, to the individual sitting next to you right now? Would you give your life, everything you have, for the betterment of another individual? Would you put that person next to you above yourself? That's what true love is. The next section speaks of the love of Christ. Hmm. Number one, we love Christ, we love others for Christ's sake. Number two, we love others for the sake of the truth. Number three, we love others for their own sake. Number four, we love others when the world hates them. Hmm. Number five, we love their company, their example, and their exhortation. And we love others despite their drawbacks, despite their infirmities, and despite their perceived inferiority. Let us prove our generosity through the grace of love. If you love me, Show me. If you, if, if you love me so much, give me a piece of bread when I'm hungry. If you love me so much, when I'm down, instead of kicking me in my back, lift me up in prayer. If you love me, when I'm broke, you'll still be around me. If you love me, you will not confide in me. You won't have my business all over the place. If you love me, when I don't have nobody to turn to, you'll be there for me. If you love me, show me. God went and gave his only begotten son so that we can live. Which is the most precious gift that anyone could ever receive. Mm -hmm. yes. And you mean to tell me that we can put on our clothes every day, we can get up and go to our job, we can go about our lives like, like, like everything is all right when we come up in here and try to act like we play in church, but when it really comes down to it, do we love each other? Since I have been at this church, I've experienced more love than I ever have in the body of Christ. Amen. But, All right. but I have also witnessed Satan rearing his ugly face to try to tear down what God is doing in the life of this church. In closing, no outward mark have we 
to know who thine, O Christ, may be. Mm. Until a Christian love do a show who, we, who appertains to thee. For knowledge may be reached unto in formal justice gained. But till <coughs> each other we love, both faith and works are fame. Right. God is looking for us to set an example to the world. When the secular world looks inside of the church and sees what we are doing, they may say to themselves, why in the world would I want to go in there when there's more hell being raised in the church than there is in the streets? Yes. <laughs> and I have to tell you this morning, church, understand this. Jesus Christ came out of his own mouth and said, it would be better for one to hang a millstone around one neck and cast himself into the sea. Then to turn one from the faith. Yes, yes. Do you understand that when you come here and you fellowship with one another, that whatever you do, whatever you say, your very actions are being watched. Your faith is on a stage. Yes. <laughs> and understand that you will have to stand before the throne of judgment and give an account to the Almighty God. Yes. You will say, oh, well, Father, I, 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 I prophesied in your name and I, and I laid hands in your name and I've gone and fed the sick and I, I've gone and witnessed to the widows and, I, and I've all done all of these things in your name. And he'll bring you back, bring back to your remembrance when you <clears throat> laugh and talk and kiki with this one person in their face and then the next time that you, as soon as they turn their back, Child, you know they ain't buying nothing. <laughs> you have to, you have to understand that we are in, are sorry, are to set an example for those out there in the world. And understand this, my Olive, as you grow in number. As we grow, grow in from one level of revelation to the next, understand that everything we do has nothing to do with us. It's all about Him. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes. When you stood and gave your life to Christ, you, you then had a responsibility and a job to do. And know that God will give you everything that you need in order to perform that vocation, in order to live out that vocation. I have to ask, if you love me, will you show me? All right. God bless you. Amen.